They can surveil us when in the wrong hands. They can produce a narrative. They could even get people so agitated that they want to use their personal drones to attack an, a minority. Susan, you've developed uh, what you call a chatbot epistemology, which as I've gone through, it looks really important for us to understand what's happening with large language models. Thanks for asking. Um, boy, what is happening with large language models? Good question. So that's the name of a paper uh, that's coming out actually online with the, the journal Social Epistemology, where readers can comment. And I think they have plans for a special issue later. So the issue really concerns um, the epistemic capacities of these chatbots. What are they? And I think increasingly we're living in a world that seems like the film Her, where individuals have friendships with chatbots and they begin to attribute feelings to the chatbots, right? But Her wasn't dystopian enough. Um, if you think about the history of social media, <laughs> right? Um, when you're using social media, your data isn't really private. It's going somewhere and it can go to all sorts of places. And as you know, with the documentaries like um, The Social Dilemma and a range of literature and the work of people like Jonathan Haidt and others, social media platforms can often um, amplify user discontent and try to engage us by manipulating our emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Because the name of the game for these platforms is to get us to use them. Addiction. So, so in chatbot epistemology, I pull all this together, okay? Because with the rise of AI agents and the rise of these intelligent, conversationally astute chatbots, we have to think about where this all could be headed, right? People will be attributing feelings, consciousness to these bots. And that's why it's important that we think about that. But we also have to recognize that the chatbots have an orientation or a personality. They're configured in certain ways by their producers. And so they can control a narrative, uh, whether it's right or wrong in someone's view, it's a narrative, it's a personality and a perspective. And so what I think we have to all recognize is that chatbots are not neutral oracles. Mm. And in fact, the real deep danger here is that the same techniques utilized to manipulate us in the context of social media platforms can be used by the chatbots. And because they have a richer, more engaging capacity, they have a massive capability to motivate us to action. They can surveil us when in the wrong hands. They can produce a narrative. They could even get people so agitated that they want to use their personal drones to attack an, a minority. You see, this is a dual use technology. It can be used for very peaceful ends. It can be used for good ends. It can help us to learn, but it can also be used for very bad ends and even to produce war and strife. When uh, the internet began and social media began, many people thought it to be the great universal uniter because everyone would uh, be exposed to all different points of view and we would have greater tolerance for uh, diverse points of view. And of course that turned out to be exactly the opposite because social media then began to focus because <clears throat> we'd make individual choices and social media would, would, would was actually constraining people into their own silo and you'd continue to be uh, reinforced in your own way of thinking because that felt good and you got a 
whatever dopamine hit or something yeah. every time you got the reinforcement. And so you have these zillions of different silos that are competitive with one another. And what and that's social media by itself. We're just saying that the the strength of large language models, the chatbots, will uh, uh, exaggerate that and exacerbate that same problem. Absolutely. Yeah, and so, to make matters worse, think about a deep fake that's not <clears throat> an, like a video. Uh, you know, often when we think of deep fakes, we think of a picture or a video, but think of a bot that fakes people out and convinces them that it's human. And think about the AI ecosystem being littered by trillions of chatbot instantiations. Yeah. And they will, unfortunately, not just mirror, you know, the problems with capitalism, uh, you know, but they'll mirror the geopolitical tensions. So, you know, as I wrote uh, with Kyle Killian in an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal, I fear that uh, there will be a sort of uh, AI ecosystem of warring chatbots that mirror geopolitical tensions and that there will be emergent features that come out of that ecosystem. And then it's again, a race to the bottom because everybody loses. So yeah, we're, we're starting to see uh, evidence of uh, different state actors uh, using AI to promote their own uh, talking points or propaganda it depends on your point of view. Uh, yeah. So you know, that seems inevitable. They can be shut down to some degree. Facebook, I think, has done done lots of shutting down of, uh, of state agent uh, accounts, but uh, it seems pretty slippery. It does. And I think that's why uh, we need to improve the geopolitical atmosphere and really have yeah, good, good luck with that cooperation. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the dangers in the context of chatbots affect all of us. How does this articulate with your um, kind of big concept of the global brain argument? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, this, this seems to be a dystopic uh, uh, extension of the global brain. It, it really is. Um, so I have another paper that um, I gave the Petros Hispanis lectures in Portugal, uh, a lecture series on the global brain. And so they're doing a journal special issue on a paper I wrote called The Global Brain Argument. Um, and there are all kinds of really interesting people responding to all these papers. I'm really excited about that. I think you're responding to one of them, Robert. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Oh, the super psychism paper on right, quantum mechanics. Right. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, so the global brain argument says that we are already part of a global brain. So, um, you know, an algorithmic form of intelligence, and again, I don't think it's conscious or anything, though, that will increasingly congeal and that there can be multiple global brain networks. And so that's really an outgrowth of this issue with the chatbot, that there will be these AI mega systems of chatbots that are interconnected, um, growing out of um, different AI platforms and these emergent features. And I think eventually what we'll see is systems, global brain systems that are made of sensors, will be sensors in those systems. Uh, we won't know which ones were sensors in though. We may be sensors in lots of them. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the epistemic and uh, you know um, properties in philosophy of mind. So looking at um, you know consciousness questions, collective intelligence questions, you know the kind of issues in the metaphysics of mind that I love in the context of the global brain in right. that paper. But it's not just a single global brain that we're saying. There, there can be different levels and concepts of global brain. And, and if we take the chatbot epistemology and apply it, you can have different kinds of global brains competing with each other or even warring with each other. That's exactly right. And that's why I think it benefits us all to get along as utopian as that sounds, because we're really talking about the structure of intelligence on Earth. We're talking about the future of intelligence. And believe it or not, uh, these geopolitical issues, together with other things like compute constraints and uh, regulatory issues, 
function as constraints on the evolution of the global brain. So the global brain doesn't evolve in accordance with Darwinian evolution. It evolves in accordance with um, economic principles, regulatory efforts, and geopolitics. And so we can make future intelligent systems better in our efforts or worse. And the chatbot wars that we're seeing uh, and the efforts toward um, AI agents, this is not, this is not a good start. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.